What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next we are going to go over the second part of this big CGC submission that I'm sending off to my presser first before thing goes on to CGC. Let's check out these books. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So, I put out a video maybe two weeks ago, something like that, where I went over the first half of the submission. Those were all the comics that I was sending in to CGC. Most of those were going to my presser first. Some people have asked who that is. That's the comic book presser. That's who I've sent those to. Uh, except for the Superman number two, that went to Sanderson Studios because I was having that book conserved. So the Superman 2 has been sent out now, as well as some of the comics that I wasn't having press first. Those have been sent to CGC as well. But filming the second half of this video here before I can send everything to my pressers. So the second part of this submission that I'm sending in are all magazines. There are a bunch of Vampirella magazines, early ones, a lot of Frank Frazetta covers, a couple key issues in there. I've also got uh, some other stuff that's not Vampirella, but most of it is Vampirella. This was from a collection that I picked up on Instagram maybe seven months ago, something like that. I had been planning to send everything in to get graded and I just hadn't gotten around to it yet. And my procrastination on this paid off because like I have said in the prior video, CGC finally put out their new magazine cases. Their old magazine cases have always been a point of contention for people because they've just felt a lot more flimsy they were in effectively the style of the CGC comic cases from like 15 years ago. Just, just much more flimsy plastic, but now they're a lot more rigid. I have received one of those for a different book that I sent in, so much more rigid plastic, a lot more clear. Uh, everything is nicer about them. The turnaround times are also much better. Now, if you submitted a while ago with magazines, you're stuck with the old turnaround times. The new turnaround times are much faster. However, I did have somebody comment in the last video that their turnaround times were actually slower than they were estimating. But all I can go on is what they have on the CGC website right now, which generally is pretty accurate from my experience. Magazines can sometimes be a coin flip though, so not totally sure there. But for magazines right now, they have Modern, which is anything from 1975 and newer as 30 days, Vintage, which is older than 1975 as 30 days, High Value as 15 days, and Unlimited Value as three days. Now I will say, back when CGC had their their older cases, I sent in a number of unlimited value books because I wanted them graded quickly. And they said, I think three days on their site or four days, and it took a month to get them back. So never totally sure how long it's gonna take, but I'm rolling the dice here. Now, I'm not springing for fast track with any of these. Part of the reason is a number of these books are kind of around the $250 to $300 price point in that area, some down around $150. And so the 15 extra dollars for Fast Track just is not worth it. I would rather wait longer and keep that part of the, just like the profit margin in the book. So let's get into these books. So I'm actually going to start with the, uh, I'm going to go in alphabetical order. So I'm going to start with the two that aren't Vampirella books. The first one here is probably the second biggest key of the books that I'm going to be showing. And that is Foom number 10. Now, I showed this book when I got it originally in an unboxing video. It's a pretty controversial book. Uh, if you look at the CGC labels for this book, it says that this book came out before Giant Size X-Men 1, and you can see all those characters on the cover. Now, people have done a lot of extensive research and, and all that kind of stuff on it, and the general consensus seems to be that Giant Size X-Men came out first, but... You know, you never know. Maybe it's just one of those things where people want to defend the value of their books. But that does seem to be the general consensus. It is actually a pretty thin book. Uh, it, that was, I was surprised. I had never had one in person outside of a slab. I had had a graded copy once, but seeing it in person is actually a very thin book. Uh, but it's a cool cover. It's just got this, you know, red, white, and blue color tone to it. But yeah, cool cover with the, the early X-Men team, the new X-Men team appearance. So... That's the first one, and I had this one estimated as a 6 to a 6.5. It's a, a pretty nice copy. It has a couple little like crease things on it that some of it will be able to be pressed out, some of it won't. And I will caveat that with magazines, I am much less experienced on the grading side of things. My experience with my prior magazine submission that I did was I got grades that were quite a bit better than my estimates. I generally have seen, it seems, that 
magazines are graded a little bit easier. I think part of that is because they're much larger and so there's more surface area for flaws and so maybe they allow a couple more flaws per grade. That's kind of what I'm assuming based on what I've seen, but I still grade them like I would grade a comic. So hopefully I end up getting grades back that are better than my estimates. So the second one here is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number three. This is a pretty nice copy of this one. I have this at a 9.4. There isn't really anything extremely key about this. It's just, this is one of those first four issues that were this larger size. They go into the magazine size cases, everything after issue four, so five and on, go into a standard comic case. But uh, this one, yeah, like I said, has a 9.4, really, really clean copy of this book. Um, cool cover, this is not the variant. The variant uh, will have a lot more white on the cover. Like for example, this Laird's photo will all be in white. And that is a very rare book um, only. Well, the, the official number is 500. I did a video a while ago uh, where I talked about that and it seems to me like the actual number is more like 300. Um, but this is the, the standard print. There are lots of these. I don't remember the exact count. It's like 50,000 or something like that. All right, now moving on to the Vampirella issues. So this next one, actually I have three copies of this one that are going in in this submission. This is Vampirella number one. The last time I did a magazine submission, it was also three copies of this. I got three more <laughs> that I'm sending in. So I have a range of grades on these. This one I have as a, I believe this is the one I have as a 4.5 to a 5. It's actually a very presentable copy of this book. Uh, the main flaw is this crease and chip in the corner up here, but otherwise really a, a very nice spine. And the other thing that you always want to check on this book, and I'll show it on the slightly lower grade copy, is the back cover. Back cover is mostly red or has a lot of red, and so it gets a lot of color rub on it. And so you'll get a you'll definitely get some some marks down on that one with that color rub. Now this is a classic Frank Rosetta cover. Uh, this is also the first appearance of Vampirella. So it is a key issue within the Vampirella run and just a very well-known cover. So that's the first one. Then I have another copy here. This one is the nicest copy of the three of Vampirella number one. I have this one at a, let's see here, 6.5 to a 7. Now I struggled with the grading on this one a little bit. And the reason is because of the, the flaw that's on the spine. So if you looked at this book, it looks really, really clean. It's got a, a tiny nick up in the corner here. Spine is very nice on this copy. This was the one that came in the magazine collection, the, the Vampirella collection that I bought. Uh, but the, the flaw on this one that I'm just, I'm not sure how it's gonna get hit is it's, it's almost, I don't know if it's staining or what, but it's like some color loss on the spine. And it's, let's see here. See those little like yellow dots kind of in like, it's almost like it's rub or something along the spine. And I'm not sure how that is going to, to hit this book. But otherwise, I mean, you can see like that cover, really, really nice copy. It's got some creasing down in the corners corner back here a little bit but not too bad and so I've got this one at a 6.5 to a 7 I don't know if that uh, the damage on the spine is going to hurt it a little bit more um, but like I said my last experience was that I, I did quite a bit better on the grades than I had estimated for those uh, Vampirella number ones that I sent in and so I, I I'm trying to be uh, not quite as conservative on the grading uh, but that's generally how, I, how I've been doing it uh, then the last one, again, Vampirella number one here. And this I have as the lowest grade of the three. I have this one as a three to a 3.5. It's got some little like, you know, pieces, a little piece out of the corner down here. It's got a chip over here, uh, some wear along the spine. It just has a lot more general wear than the other two copies. And I can show you what I mean by the, the color rub on this one, because I believe this copy has has a lot more color rub on the back cover. Um, but so there's that red again, and you can just see, and there's some, you know, where you get this rub on the, the red. And it's very similar uh, to what you see on Batman 181, that first appearance of Poison Ivy. 
that cover and those reds are just notorious for getting color rub on them. And it's very similar with the, the back cover of, uh, of this issue here. So three copies of, of uh, Vampirella number one. And um, one of them I'm sending in as a, as a high value copy. The other two I think I'm sending in as just kind of like a, a standard vintage submission. I believe that's how I have it set up. All right, so now let's let's start moving through the rest of these. Next one here, this is not a Frazetta cover. They they kind of jump around which ones are Frazettas and which ones aren't. But this is Vampirella number two. This is the first appearance of Vampirella's cousin. I'm assuming that's her probably on the cover. Uh, but this is a pretty nice copy. I have this one as an eight to an 8.5. And so you can see here, you know, and all these will benefit from a press. Uh, there's a little color rub, I remember, along the, kind of like the blue on the spine of this one. But overall, these these books were, in general, pretty nice condition. So, 8 to an 8.5, Vampirella number 2. Now, the next one, this one, you'll hear, I, I feel like, some controversy around this issue. This is Vampirella number 3. And so, this one I have as an 8.5, and... It'll say in, I believe, like the Overstreet Price Guide that it's a low print run or something like that. But I've also heard that that was just a rumor spread by somebody way back in like the, the 80s or the 90s where they had a whole bunch of them. And so they'd say there's a low print run so that, you know, and it was tough to find so that people would pay them more for the book. And it just has carried through. But uh, this one can be a little bit harder to, to grade just because there's so much white. So you really, you know, it can look really clean from here. But when you look at it from certain angles and things, you'll see the flaws. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's just a cool cover. This also is not a, uh, a Frazetta cover, but I just think that the white on this one is, it's a very different look than a lot of the other Vampirella books. And it's got kind of that futuristic kind of like character on the front there. I just think it's a really cool looking copy. So uh, this one, like I said, I have, I have as an 8.5. All right, so next, the four was a little bit lower grade. So I decided not, because this was basically a full run from one through almost 50. I think it was missing one issue. I'm not sending them all in, but I'm sending in a, a fair number of them. But the four uh, just had enough flaws that I didn't think it was worth it to send it in. I might change my mind later, but uh, so I have issue number five here, and this is a Frazetta cover. You can see his uh, signature down there. And so issue number five, I have this one, <laughs> kind of a pretty large range for this, and I can't remember why because I have it as an eight to a 9.2. And I think it was because there was something I wasn't sure if it would come out or not. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Because yeah, there was, I remember there, there were a couple books on here that I had some pretty wide grade ranges and it was because I wasn't sure if the flaw that was on the book would come out. Let's see if I can find that, that flaw. Looks like it must be Oh, that, that's what it was. Okay, it's because I wasn't sure how they were gonna hit uh, this for the grading. Because sometimes you'll see this and it won't impact the grade at all. It's kind of like a manufacturing defect. And I just, I that's why I gave myself that range because I wasn't sure exactly how they would end up hitting this. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because in general, you can see it is a really nice copy. But if you look down at the bottom, so you can see the, uh, see that kind of like that crinkling along the bottom. It, I've seen this on a number of, and there's also some on the top. And I've seen that on a lot of copies, and it does seem to me like it is some type of manufacturing defect, but I'm not 100% certain. And so I wasn't ex like totally positive how the grading would go on that. And so that's why I gave it a, a pretty large range. And so this one, issue number five, that's why I have it as an eight to a 9.2, because if it doesn't hit it, I think it's gonna get into those nines. If it does, it's gonna be more down around an eight, but cool Frank Rosetta cover, you know, where you've got just the, the mix of kind of like the good girl art. That's what one of the things he's well known for, but then the, you know, we've got the dinosaur on the cover too. All right, so that is number five. Now we have uh, number six. And this one I have as an 8.5 to a nine. This is not a Frazetta cover, but it's just kind of a fun cartoony version of Vampirella and this monster character on the cover. Black cover, so it can be pretty difficult to get in grade. 
but this one seemed like it was a very nice copy to me. So like I said, I have this one as an 8.5 to a nine. A lot of the, the flaws on these books, there was just a little bit of spine wear. Every once in a while, one would have a crease or something like that. But in general, condition was very, very nice uh, on these books. And these were stored the same way as those Star Treks. If you remember my prior CGC unboxing where I had those really high grade Star Trek books, these were stored the same way. No bag or no boards. They were just in these really old yellowing bags and they just they kept these books extremely well. So uh, issue number six and an 8.5 to a nine. All right. And we've got another Frazetta. This is issue number seven. I have this one as an eight to an 8.5. Really cool, kind of like the Good Girl Art saber tooth cover, another black cover, and just one of the very well-known, you know, Frazetta covers. You can see his signature down there. It's He usually has that on the covers that are his. Not always, but usually you will find that. So that's Vampirella number seven. All right, now we've got Vampirella number eight. I have this one as an 8.5 to a nine. Again, just uh, this one is not a Frazetta, but kind of this sacrificing cover there. Uh, but again, most a lot of these books were in that eight to nine range, some of them higher, some of them a little bit lower, but uh, generally very nice copies of this. And so when they're high grades like this, they're worthwhile to send in. When they're mid grade type books, or even even sometimes on what somebody might think would normally be a high grade book for a book from this era, the value isn't always there. And so a lot of times with these magazines, you really do have to have some very nice presenting copies. This one, I can't remember, this might be the nicest one. This one seemed like it was, yeah, number 10. This might be one of, this is one of the nicer ones that I'm sending in. I have this one as a 9.2. This is Vampirella number 10. Really cool orange cover. Um, but yeah, just a very, very clean copy. The, the main thing or the only thing really was, was this. And so it doesn't seem like it's a flaw. It almost seems like it's a printer defect. I checked other copies and I didn't see that there. I don't remember seeing that there. So I wasn't sure how they were gonna hit it because to me it seemed like it was probably some type of manufacturing defect. It didn't look like a scratch or anything to me. Um, but this is, I mean, these solid color backgrounds, like they're gonna show everything. And this one is exceptionally clean. So I have it as a 9.2. All right, next one, this is one of my favorite covers from all of these early Vampirellas. I think this one is just awesome. This is Vampirella number 11. I believe this is a Frazetta. I'm almost certain it is. I'm gonna say it is. I'm almost certain it is. I think it's like his signature is hidden behind some text on it. Uh, but this is this like Grim Reaper character. I think this co this cover is incredible. This one is so well done. I, I also really like the the color choice for Vampirella at the top. The, the yellow and the blue just really pops. But this is number 11. I have this one as a 9 to a 9.2. A really stunning copy of this book. And like I said, I think his signature in the actual artwork is like behind here. Sometimes that happens and it gets hidden because I'm almost... I'm like 99% certain that's a Frazetta cover. All right, then we've got number 12. This one I have is a 9.2 to a 9.4. Just a wild cover. You know, you've got this ghoulish character on the cover carrying Vampirella, but a stunning copy. Like I said, 9.2 to a 9.4. I mean, there's just so few flaws on some of these books. They're just in incredible condition. So, yep, just, I mean, that type of book, when it's that high of grade, those are the ones that I'm almost certainly going to send in because that's really the way that you're going to maximize the value in the book is if you have a book that's that high of a grade, if it's a mid-grade copy, maybe it sells for like 20, 25 bucks. But if it's a high-grade copy, you know, it might sell for a few hundred. So it's worthwhile to send in. All right, next one here. This one, I believe, is kind of a key. This is Vampirella number 16. This is another one that I have a huge grade range on it, and I'll show you why. I have this one as a 6.5 to a 9.6. So I can't remember. I think this is like the first Dracula cover. Uh, I don't know if there's one earlier that has him on it, but it's it's one of the first Dracula Vampirella crossovers. And I don't want to take this one out because the grade is so high, potentially, 
But the issue, as you can see there, is that kind of like that dent along the cover here. And it does not break color. Uh, it doesn't even look to me, and this is why I think it could come out, it doesn't look like it breaks fiber either. And so I made a specific note about this uh, for when I sent in my list of books to the presser that that's an area that I, I really want to make sure it gets worked because I think that that can come out. And this could be potentially a extremely high grade copy, like I said, up to a 9.6 if that can actually get out. So that would be, that would be cool to get a, a 9.6 back uh, for one of these books. All right. Next one is 17. I have this one as a 9.2 to a 9.4. You would almost think this was a Frazetta cover, but it isn't. It, to me, this really is kind of his style, uh, especially the, the creatures in the background, but it is not a Frazetta. This one, surprisingly, I mean, it's such a cool cover and it just doesn't have all that much value, but because it was a 9.2 to a 9.4, I just felt like I wanted to send this one in. I just felt it, it deserved to be sent in, deserved to be graded because it was such a high grade copy. And I think this is just a really cool cover. So that's why I wanted to send that one in. That's number 17, a 9.2 to a 9.4. And I've got number 18 here. I have this one as a 9.2. So yes, I think that was the first Dracula crossover because I believe this might be the second. Uh, so let's see, so this is number 18. I have this one, like I said, as a 9.2. Again, just a really clean copy of this book. It was just, it was so cool opening these up when I was, when I got this collection and getting them out of those bags and seeing which ones were really high grade. And like I, like I said, I'm not overly confident in my magazine grading, so it's possible I'll, I'll get a, uh, a harsh lesson <laughs> when these come back. Um, but they, they look really nice to me and I felt like I was grading them like I would grade comics. And uh, so to me, that one just, it, it looked like a 9.2. I thought this was a 9.2. So the next one here, this is issue 20. I have, this is an 8.5 to a 9. Now this one, it tends to have more value just because it has a lot of those really cool early covers on the front. It's this like annual type issue. It's not an annual, but an annual type issue. And uh, so I think maybe I said this was 20, but this is 19. And I have this one as an 8.5. So I think I said it was 20, but this is 19. I have this as an 8.5. But you can see you've got, you know, issue number one. You've got these other Frazetta, other Frazetta covers here, like this one. And then you've got that really cool Frazetta one there that I really like. So uh, issue number 19, it just felt like it was kind of on the edge of where if I was going to send it in or not. An 8.5 seemed worth it to me. So I have that one as an 8.5. Then we have issue 20. This one I have as an 8.5 to a 9. I'm just sending this one in because it felt like a pretty high grade. These are some, one of those that just not a ton of value to it, but I felt like I'd get more value out of it by getting it graded than if I didn't. And so that's why I'm sending this one in. I like the yellow. Yellow really pops on this cover. Uh, but yeah, 8.5 to a 9. All right. Now we've got jumping all the way up to issue 28. So issue 28, I have this one as a 9 to a 9.2. Again, just, you know, standard Vampirella cover, good girl art type cover with some monsters on it, and uh, just a high grade copy, like I said, 9 to a 9.2. All right. Then uh, this one, this one, I'm on the fence of why I don't, I'm, I'm almost wondering if I, why I'm sending it in, but hey, you know, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> this is issue number 30. I have this one as an 8 to an 8.5. There is a flaw in here that I'm nervous about, and it's there's just some spine wear, and there's this one here that's around the staple, and you can see it's a little more, you know, the, the break is very obvious because of the, the dark color on the, on the cover. Uh, it also has a little crease down in the corner here. But in general, it's pretty nice. So like I said, I was an eight to an 8.5. I feel like this one has the potential to just be like, almost like a break even after the submission, but, but we'll see. So issue 30, eight to an 8.5. This next one is actually a key issue. Uh, this is issue 31. I have it as an 8.5 to a 9. This is the first appearance of Luana. It is also a Frazetta cover. Just a you know pretty cool cover and a first appearance. You know you don't get those all that often in the <laughs> in the Vampirella run. So you got a first appearance and a pretty nice grade. Like I said, I got an 8.5 to a 9 on this one. All right. Now we've got issue 33. 
I have this one as an 8.0 to a 9.2. If it gets an 8.0, uh, it's probably not gonna work out too well for me. If I can pull that 9.2, if certain things press out that are on here, then it'll probably do a little, you know, be a little more reasonable to send in, but this is issue number 33. This Vampirella and some spider monster. Um, I don't remember exactly. Oh yeah, that's right. It looks like it's stuff along the right edge for the most part, a little bit along the spine. Let's see if I can get it to show up here. So these don't really break color. And so I think some of that should be able to come out. And if it does, uh, there was also some stuff along the spine here. So if, if some of these flaws that are, that are there can, can press out, uh, then it'll be much more worthwhile. If not, it's, you know, again, it might be one of those things where I'm largely breaking even after all the costs. So 8.0 to a 9.2. This next one I'm sending in just because this is a, it's just a popular cover. This is issue number 36. You've got this uh, Queen of Hearts cover. And this one I have as an 8.0. I'm not sure how well this book will press. I, I don't really know, we'll find out, because it's like this foil type cover. It's this gold, kind of like this gold foil cover. So I don't know how well this one will actually press. I, I just have as an 8.0, I don't have real high expectations for this one. I believe this is a square bound too. Yeah, it's a, a square bound issue. Some of these, you get these thicker square bound issues, but just a really cool cover, the Queen of Hearts, the gold foil. So sending that one in. Next one, also, I just think this is a crazy cover. This is issue number 39. Just crazy skull cover on this one. And black cover, really high grade. This one I have is a 9.0, you know, with this black cover. I think most of the flaws were on the back. I mean, there's a little bit of spine wear. Uh, if I remember, I think the, oh, some of the flaws were on the back. Because I think I remember when I saw this one, just the front cover, I thought it was going to be super high grade, but I think there were some issues on the back on this one. But issue number 39, just a, a crazy, again, good girl art skull cover. All right, then we've got issue number 40. I have this one as a 9 to a 9.2. Uh, this one is also a square bound. So here's issue number 40. You can see it's also a, a square bound issue. So one of these thicker issues and you know, a nine to a 9.2. Just, I mean, it's just so incredible that these were in those bags without any type of boards, just basically sitting in a box in a stack. And they just stayed in really, really nice condition. So issue 40, nine to a 9.2. Just got two left here. We've got issue 45. Only reason I'm really sending this one in is I have it as a 9.2 to a 9.4, so it's just a very high grade copy. Uh, this is issue 45, 9.2 to a 9.4. Again, the black cover. Uh, yep, this one is also square bound. And um, yeah, I, I mean, the spine looks really, really nice. It's got a couple, you know, spine ticks. Let's see, though. Come on. You know, it's got a couple spine ticks on it, but overall, a very nice copy of this book. 9.2 to a 9.4. Then the last one here, this one's tough because I've seen prices all over the place on this book. I'm not sure really the value on this one all that much, but uh, this one is the Vampirella Annual and it's non-numbered. So if you look it up on CGC, it's like, I think you just type in Vampirella and then pound sign NN. And I believe that's what comes up with this. It's the 1972 Annual. And I have this one as a nine to a 9.2. Again, Vampirella in the skull cover. It is a really nice copy. Uh, it's square bound. It's got a little bit of, you know, there's like some color rub right here. Just like a little bit of spine wear. You know, tiny bit of, of kind of like edge wear down on the bottom here. But overall, I mean, just incredible conditions for these books. So this one I have as a I say a nine to a nine point two. So that is the the last one that I'm sending in. You know, so a bunch of Vampirella books and a couple you know that that aren't the the biggest. This might be the biggest book that's in the submission. This Foom number ten. It's a pretty pricey book. You know, sending in. This is the first time I'll be sending in a uh, one of these original TMNT books. So uh, that'll be cool to send in. And then I've got those three Vampirella issue number ones. So some cool stuff. I feel like part of this for me is going to be that learning experience with getting magazines graded because I just 
don't send in magazines hardly ever. And my experience has been that they grade them a little bit different than comics, a little bit more lenient. And like I said, I think it's because there's more surface area, so they give a little more room for flaws in each of the grades. But we'll see, we'll see when they get back. Hopefully they don't take you know a year to get back like people were experiencing with magazines before. Hopefully it is somewhere around that 30 days after they, they are pressed by my presser and sent off to CGC, but we'll see. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, if you'd like to see these when they come back, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, like button, all that kind of stuff. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos, subscription button is right here, and I will see you in the next video.